All right, I want to do a quick video about an issue in Power Automate uh, that has come up a bit, bite me a couple of times in the past, and just the other day, totally forgot that this was a potential issue, build out a flow, and had it fail consistently until I remembered this problem. And the problem I'm referring to is the flow initiator information sometimes being misinterpreted, misrepresented. Uh, in the flow itself. And by that I mean we have something in this example I have a manually triggered flow. Uh, so you want to you may want to do something um, relating to the person who initiated the flow. So since this is a flow that is manually run, I want to do something like maybe assign an e assign an approval to the person starting the flow or send an email to the person who started the flow, etc. Um, now, you would think there is actually a property, um, a dynamic content item from the trigger. So manually trigger flow, we have an output of user email. Makes sense. That's probably going to work. So I select that, hit save, and I'm just going to, just to prevent an unnecessary approval from being created here, I'm going to add a terminate just in case this actually works. I, today it seems like about 50% of the time it's been working and 50% it is not. Um, so I'll just make that canceled and hit save. And let's test this flow. So I'll hit test and just do a manual test. Enter the approver and some message. And hit done and flow run failed. And the reason for that is that the user email, even though it says user email, what it's actually returning or actually showing is the encoded user email. So this is, um, I'm not sure exactly why it's showing the encoded version of the email, but rather than the email itself. Now the frustrating thing is that I have other flows using the same exact action using user email and it does work using the encoded value. So I can't really explain why it works in some cases and not in others. And I mean, these are flows that I've created at the same exact time or, or more recently than this. Um, but the bottom line is that it's supremely frustrating, but thankfully there is a way around it. I'm actually gonna, uh, we're gonna use an expression to get the, um, unencoded or the plain email because if we look at you know we're looking at the run history here if we open up the trigger and if we look at the raw outputs we can see well there's that user email encoded that we're getting um, user email without the encoding is what we want so this is going to be a real quick example in how to get information from the trigger body. Now there is a an expression called trigger outputs, which returns the outputs of the trigger. Uh, and in this case, we need to navigate down two levels. So we need to go into the headers object, and then get the XMS user email property. So let's take a look at how we do that. So I'm just going to click edit. And just to proof of concept before we put it into this get a user profile action, I'm going to do it up here. I'm going to add an action and I'll use the good old compose action, which is great for all of those. And I'm just going to call this compose initiator email. So this is a good way at the beginning of your flow to sort of declare this is the email of the person who initiated the flow and then you can reuse this a bunch of times. You can put it into a variable as well but compose is a little uh, more performant than calling a variable all the time. Alright so in here uh, in the inputs for this compose step I'm going to go to expression and type in trigger outputs and for some reason this is not, it's not auto-completing and I don't, again, power, power automate is just being kind of 
finicky today. Uh, but we need trigger outputs, capital O. It may auto-complete that for you. It didn't for me right here, but just know that you might have to type it in or it may auto-complete. And then we need to get the headers. That's going to give us the body of that that we looked at just a moment ago. And then I need another square bracket. And we need the um, specifier for that property. So XMS user email with dashes in between important to get those dashes if you don't get them it won't work and then click OK and when you hover over it again I'll, I'll post I'll paste uh, this formula into the uh, description of this video just so you have it uh, but basically this will work with any trigger because every trigger has this trigger outputs uh, but just understand that it is returning the email of the user that initiated it. So in this case, it's a manually triggered flow. It'll be the person who clicked run this flow. If it were another type of flow that's being called, let's say, from a power app, uh, then it's going to be whoever's running the app. If you're calling your flow, if it's an automated flow that's submitted when a, um, a form is submitted, then it's going to be the email address of the person who authored the flow, whose connection is being used to get that form response. But bottom line is whoever starts the flow, uh, whoever's context the flow is running in, that's the email it's going to return. So let's save this and we'll do another test. And I'll just trigger this manually. And I'll have to plug in an approver again. So I'll just make it me. And another message. And run this flow. Click done. And I'm going to expect this to fail again. Um, the important thing, though, is that our compose step, which is where we get that email, all right, so that's returning the proper email. So now what we can do is edit this again and go into that get user profile. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I could put that same expression in there uh, if I wanted to evaluate the expression as the input of this. But I could also just say get me the output of that compose initiator email action. Hit save. And let's test this one more time. Do we? Manual trigger. Yet another message. Run this. And bingo. Now we have the proper user profile. And as I said, in this this might not act, you may not have actually seen this before, but I guarantee, practically guarantee, at some point you will. Where that user email that's being returned from the, the trigger is not exactly just the email. It'll be the encoded version of the email, and that will cause a problem with something you're trying to do, whether it's get the profile, send an email, assign a, an approval, whatever. Um, but in those cases, just know that you can use that expression to get their email address from the message headers or the, the trigger output headers.